Hello and welcome to Tesla Info and today we're going to debunk some myths about the range displays in your Tesla. There's a lot of people that get confused by this so we're going to run through all the numbers, where you see them and what they mean. The first number we're going to look at is the one at the top of the screen and either in miles or kilometers depending where you live. And this is saying the battery has enough capacity at the rated efficiency to travel that many miles. And this can vary from car to car, um, but it's a consistent metric based on the measured efficiency. This figure is based on the EPA efficiency rating as used in the US. Where we sometimes get issues is countries, usually ones in Europe, they use a different rating system. And so at 100%, they're expecting a different figure. And as we see, these cars have exactly the same battery, but the rated figure is different purely because of a different test cycle. Now, while these cars show different ranges, one 260 and the other 283, it's important to note these cars have exactly the same battery and in the real world, exactly the same range. Now, some people don't like this metric and they prefer to show percentage. And the thing to understand about percentage is this is how full the battery is, which may be interesting to you. And if you don't change cars very often, that's fine. But there have been at least eight batteries of different sizes used in the Model 3 for instance and therefore 50% in one car is not the same as 50% in another model. One misconception is a figure at the top of the screen takes into account the driver's historical driving. Um, that's not true and as we can see here you can find that information but if you change the distance you average over or the type of range you're looking at, you can get very different figures. And so in general, Tesla don't support that information at all in the car. And of course, it's also just because that's what's happened in the past doesn't mean to say your driving conditions are going to continue like that into the future. And things like driving to a supercharger with battery heating will actually consume a lot more energy uh, than if you weren't preheating the battery and which would completely distort those figures. Now if you want to get an accurate prediction of the future you need to put a destination into the car and the car can then calculate what it's going to take to uh, travel that distance and again you use that for the energy app and if we zoom into the energy app you can actually see it's not a straight line the sat nav is taking into account all sorts of conditions including elevation changes road types to actually work out a true consumption figure now that's okay up to a point and uh, where it sometimes falls down is if you have to stop en route um, here we're stopping at the supercharger in Warwick and while we'll get there with 12% it doesn't really help us with the whole journey but if you actually pull down the trip you can see the stop at Warwick how long we need to charge for um, and then how long the next leg is going to be and what the charge will be at the end and that's the best you're going to get in terms of future estimates of capacity while we're here, let's just have a look at the energy card uh, at the bottom of the screen underneath the picture of your car. And this can show the current drive and the since you last charged energy figures. In our case, this is showing about 264 watts per mile. If you know what your EPA rating is for your car, in our case, it's about 250. We can see that we're just running a little bit above the EPA figure and therefore the figure at the top of the screen, which is based on the EPA figure, is therefore over reading a little. Um, in good weather, this is just coming out of winter here in the UK. In better weather, we often run below the EPA figure, so the numbers are slightly higher. So it just gives you a, a, a sense check to know whether you're tracking above or below where you should be for the EPA figure. If you can't by any chance find that trip card, it's usually because you swipe down. And when you do swipe down and remove it from the screen, you'll see a little like musical note appears on the bottom. You tick that and it brings it back up again. As you can see, we're just toggling it on and off. So it's an easy way to bring it back up. I hope that's been a fairly useful walkthrough of what the different figures mean. We always like to try and keep our videos as short as possible on Tesla Info. Um, if you've got any questions, just ask them through YouTube and we'll get back to you and we'll catch you next time.